the shell play in North Texas and in other parts of the United States has a big effect on our potable waters and our surface waters connected to the many rivers that flow through our state. For example, we've got 16 major rivers in the state of Texas and, and uh, we need to make sure, if possible, that the land owners that own the land that contribute all the water from the surface into the lakes that are on these rivers are protected as much as possible. The big problem in the Barnett Shale and Shale Plays, and it's not uh, really the only problem in the oil patch, but we have to have a way to protect our people, underground water, surface water, and any way that water can be contaminated. The next thing that you want is after the permit has been uh, looked over and checked and double checked, and don't go on to the premise of rubber stamping like most of the permits are done with the commissions, not only in the state of Texas, but across the United States. Uh, these are things that have to be pretty well right from a calculation standpoint prior to ever moving a drilling rig onto a drill site. Now, if you have all of the information right and then move the rig on, what in the world would be the next thing that would be important? That somebody is supervising that drilling operation, both outside and inside the drilling company and the producing company itself, to see that uh, shortcuts are not taken. The most important thing is that the drill bed and the drillers, when they penetrate the surface of the earth, they immediately start the possibility of contamination of shallow, water gravel sands and even down to the larger deeper aquifers. Now any time that we uh, should be unfortunate enough to contaminate a large aquifer such as the Ogallala or the Trinity then we're in big trouble unfortunately for most of the property owners and fortunately in some aspects wells have been drilled on you might say nearly every square mile of the state of Texas at one time or another. So they are all more or less vulnerable to the production of unwanted fluids. These unwanted fluids could either be salt water in large, large quantities from the bottom of some of these wells or from up and down uh, the well bore itself at one time or another. The drilling on any of these sites at some point in time will encounter various zones including salt water and gas and oil that have to be isolated from the good water or the good things that we would like to have. The main thing that happens uh, initially, you set casing. This is a steel round piece of pipe and it comes in various grades and it's kind of important in the long term that the steel casing be of a consistency and from a manufacturer that will let you get into long periods of time of production both inside and outside. Now you don't uh, always have the casing uh, completely covered with cement that would keep it from corrosion for example. So there's exposure at all times over the life of this well and the life of uh, the time that the casing is in the well, so it needs to be good. We have to uh, cement the well in position with good cement. We have to isolate our good waters, whether they're near the surface, deep down in the ground, or on the surface. Now, isolate the good waters means we don't want at some time the water in a lake being over one of these wells that have been hopefully abandoned and abandoned properly and plugged properly, but they may not be. Consequently, we can get contamination from the old wells. There hasn't been a whole lot of attention paid to the contamination of our water sources above ground and underground uh, by the drillers themselves. Things can happen out there and they can be avoided very easily by just following some simple rules. So there we are with a well that's been drilled and now we've got to produce it and now we've got to tie this well 
into a pipeline of some sort. Pipelines are extremely important and we don't want the pipelines as they go across the state of Texas to contaminate the water that we have and we don't want the water inside the pipelines to become contaminated. So consequently we have to look at all aspects of what's going on when we're talking about the environmental situation as pertains to water. Pipeline can be a string of of uh, steel casing put together and going across the countryside, or it might be a, just a never-ending trail of 5,000-gallon tankers. Now, the pipeline in the ground presents some problems that have to be looked at, and the landowner uh, should be aware of them. The probably bigger one is the tankers lined up one after another going over the roads and the cattle guards and through the fences that have to be prepared for such an operation, the dust that comes in, the air gets to be a real problem with only not only the dust but the air compressors that are taking care of the gas that's going to go into the pipeline, the separators that separate the various fluids that have to go in different pipelines or be transported by trucks again for disposal and that brings you to disposal wells when you get to uh, super more or less dry gas wells that we get shale out of. They have to be stimulated some way. Is with huge, huge fracture, hydraulic fracture treatment operations that take a million gallons of water, five million gallons of water. Uh, water weighs just for rough estimation, 10 pounds to the gallon. Uh, this is a super amount of weight that is transferred from some location where the water is picked up and brought to the well location and then injected into the ground during the hydraulic fracture treatment. Now, uh, all of this upsets uh, nature somewhat because it goes on and on and on. If it's an active area, many wells are drilled and many frack jobs have to be done. So we get into uh, transporting water in, transporting water out. Water basically coming in is potable good water. Water going out is without question going to be toxic, high salt water content. Now this presents a pretty good challenge to the landowner if something happens. A tanker turns over, puts uh, 5,000 uh, 5, gallons of water out on his freshly plowed, newly planted oat patch. Uh, he gets concerned about this and this needs to be uh, maybe a not major consideration, but it depends on whether you're growing oats to feed cattle or not. Then it becomes a major consideration for that particular landowner. Others have other considerations. So this group, uh, Citizen Shale Advisory Group, would try to avoid many of these pitfalls and can avoid these pitfalls.